What's up guys, how are you doing? So, as the title suggests, we are going to talk about sideways movement and friction. However, it is essential that you first watch the car forward motion tutorial from my channel, cause you need to understand other concepts that are used exactly the same way in this video. So, I select the wheel here and pay attention to the sideways friction section. What do we see? Well, we see exactly the same parameters we saw for forward friction, but this time they act in a sideways motion. How? Let's first learn about what a sleep angel is. Imagine a car going in a turn like this. Except the force that the tire is exerting on the ground to go forward, a centripetal force acts on the car too. We know that when a centripetal force is acting on an object, there has to be a force in the opposite direction to keep the object moving in a circular path. And in a car, that force is the lateral force from car tires. In this situation, our car is turning right, so the tire's lateral force has to act towards the center of the curve to cancel out centripetal force and help the car turn. If I picture this from above, the direction I'm showing with the mouse is the direction of lateral force. Now I want you to remember what I said before. I said the car tires have a maximum amount of tolerance against the slipping. That's exactly the same case here. The lateral force is limited and if the centripetal force is greater than it, then the tire detaches from the ground and you no longer travel in the direction of the wheel. After this happens, our lateral force decreases drastically, and our car tires are slipping sideways, and based on the amount of sideways and forward the slip, and the speed of our car, the turning radius gets bigger, and instead of a perfect turn, we might head straight into the wall, or pass it neck and neck. For forward motion, we had an equation to calculate our current amount of slip. But in the case of sideways motion, it's much simpler because unity gives you the amount of sideways slip in radians. And what exactly is this? Let's say that unity tells you that you have 30 degrees slip angle, but you have turned your tires 45 degrees. And now, you have to deduct a 30 degrees slip angle from your turn angle, which is 45, and you find out that you are actually turning only 15 degrees, not 45. And if you are not careful and don't reduce your speed, you might hit the wall. Enough talking here, and now we need to learn about the extremum sleep and extremum value. The extremum value just like before, it is the tire's static friction coefficient in the lateral or sideways direction. If you remember, we had some sleep even when we were not adding a force higher than our static friction tolerance. And why was that? It was because the tires are made of rubber, and they are not solid but elastic solid. So they deform in an event that force applies on them. In this situation, it's the lateral force that applies and deforms the tire. And when the tire deforms, we start to have some slip angle lower than our external slip. And as the centripetal force increases, the slip angle increases too. Take a look at this image. It shows the shape of the tire viewed from front when cornering. The cornering force is the lateral force applying in the opposite direction of centripetal force and deforms the tire at the bottom contact patch. Now you might say it's just a simple deformation, so why do we get a slipping? To understand it better, look at this picture. It shows the tire from top view, and now you can see how the contact patch of the tire has deformed. Take note here, the picture you are seeing is not the top of the tire. You are seeing the bottom or the contact patch of the tire from top view. Here, you have to use your imagination, so listen very carefully. This is the front right wheel of a car turning left. So the wheel have rotated to left. You can see the expected direction of the wheel. If there were no slip angle, 
that would be the direction we would be traveling, which is the same as the forward direction of the wheel. But there is lateral force which deforms the tire. The white area you see is in contact with the road. The real direction is a direction with a slip angle, which is what we expect to achieve. Pay attention to the point where the tire makes contact with road which I'm showing it with mouse cursor. If we divide this part of the tire with this orange line, you realize its forward direction is different from the expected direction, and it's pointing outwards. That's why we get this slipping. Take note, although the gray parts are in the expected direction, but they don't make sense, because they are not in the contact with the road. That simply explains why the rest of the blue line does not matter. Let's test these things in unity. The CN line shows the real direction of travel of the wheels. The magenta line shows the expected direction of the wheel. When I play the game, you can see the CN line's direction change based on our sleep angle. I have put vortex at the four corners of the screen. The top right and top left text show the sleep angle of front right and front left wheel respectively. The bottom right and bottom left show the slip angel of rear right and rear left wheel. If I go in a smaller steps, you can see the slip angel does not get too big and the CN and magenta line won't diverge too much from each other. But if I go in a curve with higher speed, you can immediately see the lines diverge greatly from each other. The slip angel especially for front wheels have increased a lot and the car is no more going in the direction I want. However, we are not going to leave it like that and we will try to fix it to get a more stable car. There remains one important concept. Let me play the game and wait till the car reaches some high speed. You see the front right sleep angel is increasing and it is even going more than 45 degrees. And remember what? We have only turned our wheel 45 degrees, but our sleep angel is even higher than 45. So not only we should not go straight, but we should also turn right instead of left. Well, you think you just nailed it here, but you're wrong. Although the front right wheel has a lot of a sleep angel, but it's not the only wheel that is effective in changing the car's direction. I'm not talking about the other front wheel, but I'm talking about the rear wheels. And you might laugh at me, but that's true. Let's push the gas pedal again and reach the previous state, which the sleep angel was higher than our steering angel, and pointing outwards the car, or more precisely, outwards the turning radius. Now look at the head of the real direction line for the rear wheel, and compare it to the front wheel real direction. It looks like that it's a bit more outwards, and you can see it from here. The front wheel is at 47 degrees, with the sleep angel, and the rear wheel is at 5 degrees sleep angel. The rear wheel is slipping more than our front wheel, so if now we say the car is going in the direction of the real direction of the front wheels, we know the rear wheels are tilting the back of our car to the right. As a result, the real direction of the front wheels is rotating to the left side, and that's why we are still going in a curve, despite the fact that our sleep angel is higher than our steering angel. And in the console, I'm printing the angle between front wheel real direction and rear wheel real direction. And you can see that's a very small amount. That small amount is turning our car left. So we would only start to go in a straight path if this angel reached zero and the real direction of all the four wheels, not only these two, but all of them point in the same direction. Guys, I want to say that we have reached the end of this video. It was very long, hard, and too much new things to learn about. I will put this scene, including the car and the script, in my Patreon page so that you can download it and test these things yourself. Take note the track is not included because you have to buy it from its owner. I'll put a link to that too. So until the next video, stay tuned, keep learning and have fun. Goodbye and I'll see you next time.